Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ty Busy, man. I got my man, Reggie Parker, in here. You know, in this episode, we're going to be talking about everything, man. You know, music business, you know, creating your own stuff, not being a sucker out here in the, in the music game. Stay tuned, man. It's going down. For those, sure. those who don't know or may have been living under a rock for, you know, ever, basically, man, just let let, let, let the people know, you know, a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm, I'm a little older now, 52. I've been playing for a long time. Uh, played a lot of those big hits with uh, Bishop Hezekiah Walker and his choirs. Yeah. Starting back from 1904. I will go with Jesus' name in 95, how much we can bear. Ah. Second chance, I fly away. Jesus is my help. Wonderful is your name. Uh, what else? We made it. <laughs> James Austin, God's in control. King of glory. Nobody. My wreck round clock, so break a day. Breaking the day, I did that too. Her, her CD. Will Smith's freaking it. I'm on Will Smith's greatest hits. <laughs> So I did that. We could talk about that experience if you remember later on. Yeah. Um, well, I could, I could bring it up right now. I'll, there you go. I, I'll, my boy Ron Grant, rest in peace, uh, he called me. First, I, I used to play at a club on Sunday nights. It was an exquisite club. It wasn't just your regular okay. bar group in, club. In, in New York? In New York. In, okay. In, in Manhattan. It was called Wilson's. Okay. My man Kurt was the main bass player, and I'll tell the young guys, I always respected him because that was his gig, not mine. Right, right. You know, I went just to sit, and he told me, yo, you can bring your bass, and you can come play a couple of songs. So right. I was obedient. Right. So when he played, when he needed to rest, he let me play a couple of songs. Okay. So when I played those two or three songs, I tried to just leave my mark, like a line leaves a scent in the, in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tried to do, but at the same time, I didn't try to make him look bad. Exactly, exactly. I, I was being me, so I got so many gigs from doing that. I did that for a couple of years, bro. Just right. playing whatever they played. I had to know the song. You got to know your song. Right, absolutely. They just called out songs, so I, I got so many gigs. I gigged with this guy named Coolio, this rapper Coolio. Yeah, yeah. We went to uh, Montreal with him. Gerald Haber was on drums. We did a song of Pastime Paradise. Yeah. And we used to destroy that joint, bro. Woo! Mike Sellafone, Saxophone, Gerald Haber on drums. I don't remember with the keys. Right. That's, en I, that's enough right that. there. <laughs> what y'all do with you and Gerald Haber? That's enough right there, man. Like, that's crazy. Me, me and Gerald. We used to we used to shed together back in the day before people even knew what a shed was. We right. shed it for real. Right, right. You know, it was coming up with ideas and creating. Yep. So Ron, Ron called me up one day. I think it was, who knows what day it was. Yo, I got a gig for you, but it's tomorrow. Tomorrow night, can you do it? Yeah, I can do it. You know, we worked out the money. I was like, who's it for? He's like, real casual. Oh, Will Smith. Like, right. What? <laughs> Right. Well, what song is it going? Dude, like, don't worry about that. I chose you, right? Because I know you can go and knock that joint out in right. a couple, in an hour or two. Of the audience. Right. He said they're looking for somebody to just come in and learn it and blaze it and leave. I That's said, it. wow, okay. So I'm sitting to tell my wife, yeah, I got a studio session tomorrow. Right. I said with Bill Smith. She was like, what? what? With Will Smith? <laughs> yeah. Right. She said, wow. We didn't see. I didn't care about how much money I was getting. Exactly, man. So, there was, was no camera with me saying, yo, it's going down. Uh, you know, since this is my office for the night, none of that BS. Right, it right. Was busy. So I went in there, Sweet Love, I believe it was. Okay. And he said, we want you to duplicate what he played. Bass player, you know, he was killing all in the pocket. Right. So I had to get that right vibe. It took, it took like 10, 15 minutes, but I mm -hmm. got it. They hit the chord, let's go. Man, I basically just knocked it out the park. It didn't take long. Right. Made the record. And I, I'm on it. You Google Reggie Parker, Will Smith, freaking it. I'm there. Ooh. Reggie Parker, baby. Will Smith was there, staring at me. You know, he had jokes in the beginning. Right. But once the party <laughs> could, he was dead serious. He's like, yo, what you got for this record, bro? Right. You know, no jokes. He's looking at me the whole So I had him looking at me. Trap Masters, two, those two producers. Right. They were cool back then. So I had three guys like, come on, bro. Money, time is money. 
So, but they wasn't going to intimidate me because, you know. Exactly. I'm That's gonna, what you do. I'm, I'm extremely confident in what I do. Right. And you're not going to, you're not going to intimidate me when I have my red baits in my hand. And record came out. It was a great, great experience, you know. And it's something I, I really never bragged about. Not right. That I should. Right. You know, I, I kind of forgot about it. Right. Right. I had to remind people, oh, I played on Will Smith. Tonight. It's like, get out of here. I said, Check the credits, bro. That's it, man. You gave us a lot of game right there. People don't understand that when you get a call, it's great. But to actually go in there and give them what they want is a whole right. other thing, man. You right. know, a lot of people Absolutely. complain about not getting opportunities. But when they do get it, they go in there and blow it. Or, this is a key, man. I hope y'all listening to this. Your attitude get there before you do. You know what I mean? <laughs> And right. I know so many talented beast players that will never get a call because of their attitude. Oh, no, no, no. To this day, I, I was so honored that Ron called me. Ron know every base player in the, in New York City. Right. He dialed Reggie Parker's number. Yep. And to this day, I'll be honest with you, I said, wow, he called me? Yep. You know what I'm saying? I yep. said, wow, that's... Yep. I was very honored that he knew that I could go in there and knock it out within an hour, hour and a half, and get out the way. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, that meant a lot to me. Because back then, there was no ego. It was, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of confidence, though. Right, right. Don't get it twisted. Right. I didn't think I was doing nothing big. Exactly. You know, I was just happy for the opportunity. Yep. Because yep. some people, nowadays, where people fall short is mm -hmm. with the internet, with social media, and with Facebook and IG, it's easy to sit there and look ferocious with your instrument. You could take the dope, you could take a hundred different pictures and pick the dopest one. Yep. And you could put that up there. You could look the dopest ever. You could look ferocious. Ah, oh, I'm the baddest drummer, I'm the baddest bass player. You know, it's easy to look dope doing that and get 19 million likes. Right. But can you play? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Can, can I call you to the studio and play the song that has no blueprint? It's a white piece of canvas. You don't have no beat. You don't have no bass line. I need you to create a bass line, my man. Can you do that? Yep. Oh, no, you can't because all you do is do cover tunes on IG all day. That's, oh, so uh, why are you here real. next? That's Can you real. do this? You know what I'm saying? That's and real. you can't get caught up in all of that cover tune stuff. You're going to be twisted. Right, right. When it comes time to, to, to create blueprints. In my time, that's all I was doing, T. Yeah. With create blueprints. Everything that was given to me, well, like this. Right. Like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's like, yo, I need you to make this into a rim break. When I did my Red Brown Clark's Break a Day record, Jeff Flo Davis, rest in peace. Right. He called me. Yo, I got a gig for you to, tomorrow, Rez. Can you do it? Yeah, I can do it. He didn't tell me nothing about it. I didn't care. Jeff Davis, since I know it's going to be dope. Right. So we get there. The great Stephen Ford is in Philly. He's there. He's the producer. I said, bro, what? Stephen Ford is a beast, so I was intimidated. You know, it's hard to intimidate me. Right, right. Stephen Ford is that dude. Right. So we get into it, and break a day had no baseline. He's like, listen, man, you're here for a reason. So I need one of those Hezekiah grooves that you're famous for. Right. I'm going to go to lunch. I need an intro for the song, and the intro most likely would be the drive. So your intro, your baseline is the final the song. Right. He left. He said, when I come back, I expect for this to be done. No smile, just straight. But, all right, I'll be, I'll be back in an hour. So I said, yo, I got to come up with. So I fumbled and fumbled and finally I came up with something. I said, yo, this should be it. And Jeff was like, yeah, I think he'll like that. Right. He came in, he's like, perfect, let's do it. That's what you hear in the record. That's another major point, man. Between our talks, creating, working on your stuff, man, you said something to me that stuck with me. And I told you about this. When you leave, ain't nobody going to remember them covers. They gonna want to know what was your song, what was something that you love. Your legacy can't be a cover. You know what I mean? But you, they gonna play that at your funeral? <laughs> you know? They gonna play Yummy at your you covering Yummy at your funeral? <laughs> right. It's like you have to put your own mind, your own creativity into building your own. And and and, and honestly, bro, this this bringing me to my next point, man. Praying for for all the all the people that's dealing with this virus, man. Um, praying for you. You know, you you dealing with it. This virus has exposed a lot of things, man. Musician wise, this is really showing y'all, man. 
You are depending on somebody else to provide for your family. You depending on yeah. somebody to call you for a gig to feed your family. What yeah. are you doing for yourself to put out there? You know what I mean? The yeah. people that yeah. got their own stuff is still getting them checks. You yeah, know? I know. It's residual income. Residual right? income, right. man. But you the, know? Thing, the thing is, are those endorsement companies, are they paying you now? Mm. Probably not. All those companies that you run and posted about every time you post, I mean, long list of it. Right. What do they do for you? I mean, can you imagine that every time you post, you got to mention my name? Yo, Reggie, I want to thank Reggie for every time, but I'm not paying you a dime. Nothing. Think about that. That's real. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've always posted about that. I'm like, bro, are they paying you? A real endorsement is when they give it to you for free. Yep. Or they give you a check. Yeah. That's an endorsement. And you ain't got to sit there and post about them. They, those guys get paid and they post, put their name and let their, put the company name in a post. Right. No, they got a contract, bro. But I can't get through these guys. It's like when this thing, before COVID-19, all... 99% of musicians was just posting about their endorsement, their endorsement. Okay, I get it. You don't have to post about it every day. I want, I want to thank Alan Cooper. I want to thank my string company. I want to thank right. my chord company. I want to thank my <laughs> strap company. Right. I want to thank the this company. One of my tuning company. Oh my God, bro, really? Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. All that kind of ties into the fact that you prepared yourself for those opportunities, right? Some cats... Mm -hmm are waiting on the opportunity to try to prepare and catch up. I'll tell anybody, man. Um, you know, shout out to my boy Rex, man, Rex Hardy. I talked to Rex. It was, uh, wow, man, this might have been like seven years ago now. And I just uh -huh. asked him for some advice. He'd been playing for Mary for years. I asked him because I, I, I look up to that dude because he understands the role of a drummer. And playing your position not overshadowing everybody in the band, playing your position, locking the groove in, and making it feel good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I asked him one day, I said, yo, man, you know, what's some advice that you can give me that I can be better in this music business? And, you know, right. pretty much he told me, he said, look, man, prepare now. He said, because by the time you get that call, you're not going to have time to prepare. It's going to be yeah. you up and you leaving. And you said the same thing. When you got that call, you had to go the next day. You know, next you day. ain't you ain't have time to to play catch up. And, 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 and no one sent me no songs. It no was, songs. You show up. Now, being um, a music major, man, and, and taking music since elementary school, you kind of learned that it's easy to yeah. practice the stuff that you can play a thousand times. Yeah. That's easy. But what do you suck at? What, that's what you need to practice yeah. on. Focus on your right. weaknesses. So you can get better, right. man. Because you practicing on what you're good at ain't helping you. Because as soon as it gets to a spot where it's, hey, man, um, I know we're in four four, man, but let's go, let's let's go to eleven sixteen right here. And you look like Woo. what's eleven sixteen? Oh, right. <laughs> now you stuck. Or hey, look, man, um, I'm changing the whole song. I will send you the sheets, uh, and you'll look at it tomorrow. We'll just go sight reading through. Right. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but look, because since you sped past this, man, I ain't going to let you speed past it. I'm going back to it. The creator of the world famous intro, man. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. And you got to tell us how you came up with it, how the whole oh. intro came. To, I, I just got to know. I got to know, man. I have no idea. I hate to bust your bubble. <laughs> I hate to bust the bubble. Remember, that was 1995. Right. You know, but I, you talk about how much you could build, right? Yeah. So when David Fraser first taught that song, it was, it was a white, like I said, just a white piece of paper. Right. There was no intro, no bass line, nothing. And he originally taught it for the 19 to a lot of land project, but we couldn't really get it to work. It just wasn't yeah. flow. We couldn't buy it. Well, had scratched it for that project. But then we came revisited for the live in, live in New York. Right. And we just couldn't get the groove. And finally, we locked it in. Once we locked the groove in, everything else fell in place. There still was no entry. Right. One day I went home. I said, you know what? 
I can hear a bass, the bass starting to song off. Just don't know what he's going to, what I would play. Right. I, I would move to the Queens then in my parents' basement, turn the TV off, or turn the line down. I just started messing around. And I came up with, let me see, B flat, B e flat, da, ba. Uh -huh. and that's where it all falls. Yeah, I wish I had recorded the whole process, but it all started up here but in my mind. Right. Not being fearful that it wouldn't work. Right. But being confident that it would. Right. You know, right. and I came up with everything. Da, 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 da. I don't know what made me go to the, da, 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 you know what I'm saying? Right. I right. guess that's just. Dude. The singing in me, I always yes. want to be a singer. Yeah. I can't sing, I sing through, through sing my bass. Sing through your bass, right. How does that feel, man, to have people still trying to replicate that bass line? I ain't heard nobody play it like you. But how does that feel, man, to have people just playing something that you created like years ago, man? Yeah, 25 years ago. It's, it's unreal. It's like the ultimate compliment when you, when people... It's, it's more of a compliment when the young guys do it. They probably weren't even born. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they still playing it. Right. And that makes me feel like, wow. Somebody hit me up and inboxed me and was talking about, yeah, that song is going to outlive you. And, I, you know, it almost made me cry. I said, right. right here. When I'm dead, people will still be playing it. But right. that is the goal. That's it. That we all should try to attain. But when I made it up, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Right. I didn't know. Anybody would care. I honestly did. I was just trying to make the song right. the best it could be, go about my business. And people, I joined Facebook and I started getting inboxes. Are oh, you making fun? <laughs> I love the Papa Chicken Bear. And it would just continue. It would nonstop. It still go. Yeah. I posted, I'm the bear on Easter Sunday. Yeah. And it went, it's just the amount of shares that it got is it's it crazy. If you could give any advice, you know, to the musicians up and coming right now, man, what, what would be your piece? Ooh. Make sure you practice correctly, regardless of what instrument you play. Like you were saying, practice different genres. Make sure you practice for your your moment. Don't practice chops. Chops will come. Just practice vibe, feel. Uh, stay humble, but make sure you're confident that you could do it. And I'm gonna say something else before I get off here is that absolutely one thing that most people don't tell musicians is that. Music is not for everybody. You know, you might be trying your best to make it. It, is not, it might not be in your cards. It might not be your purpose. You know, your season might have ended years ago. It may be time to do something else. But some this season may just be starting. But you got to live life in reality. That's one thing I learned. I'll be 53 next month. And I know that sometimes reality can hurt. Right. But it is what it is. But look. I appreciate you coming on here, man, and, and, and sharing your sharing your uh, your wisdom, your knowledge, giving everybody the free game like you always do. Look, if I'm not mistaken, on Facebook you had uh, Reggie Parker, right? Reggie Parker on yep. Facebook, and then on Instagram, what's your Instagram? At Mr. Parker's Music. At Mr. Parker's Music, I'm gonna put that on the screen. Y'all go follow him. I tell him all the time, I appreciate all the free game. Because every day, you can best believe he's going to give you some type of free game. He's going to give you some type of knowledge. He's going to step on your toes. You may not want to hear it, but it's what you need to hear, man. And yeah. I rock with him super hard because there's so many cats that are in the way and won't give you no game. And he's doing the exact opposite. He'll open the door for you and give you an opportunity. And he'll give you the game while you're doing it. You just got to be smart enough to listen to it, man. You know? Yeah, so you, were, you wasn't expecting me to actually play my record, right? But I won't. I won't. I won't. That's going to come out later in the summer. So Bet. that's going to that's gonna be real dope vibe, bro. I, I'm, I'm with it, man. You know, that the, the records is killing, man. And um, I'm happy to be on it. You know what I mean? I'm happy to be on it, man. It's a yeah, pleasure. You got, honor. You got it. You got two hot songs, bro. <laughs> hey. You got you got two keepers, bro. They're gonna be around for a long time. And guess what we did? Created. You know what I mean? Created. Yeah. Won't no blueprint. Hey. Do your I thing. Let, I let people hear that the other song uh -huh. with the August solo. Oh yeah. They love how you played it, bro. The different things you did throughout the song. Yeah, it's just what it. I heard. It's what I heard, man. And you laid that foundation down and it was like, all right, cool. What do I hear? You know what I mean? I ain't call you and say, what you think about this? What? 
I'm gonna give you what I what I heard, and then you can tell me if you like it or not. And then if you don't I, like I, it, did, I, did I ever doubt you? No, nah, nope, definitely did. That's why that's why I sent you my baby like that. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying that I didn't I didn't call up nobody else. There's no other person I called that said no. And then I said, oh, well, now let me call T. Right, right, I called right. You right. Hey, I appreciate it.